boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and welcome to the review of the brand new season, season two to be exact, of HBO's prequel series of the highly successful Game of Thrones show, which captivated audience from uh, 2011 to 20. 19 because we want to forget that last season but it is what it is house of the dragon season two episode one it is back to captivate us on sunday evenings which game of thrones and house of the dragon has done for so long and oh boy it feels good to have some game of throne ish uh material on our television screens this is a show that's based on uh, George R. R. Martin's uh, 2018 book, Fire and Blood. And this show picks up uh, 172 years before the events of Game of Thrones. And it is uh, events that lead up to the decline of the House of Targaryen, a devastating war of succession known as the Dance of the Dragons. And it stars Matt Smith, uh, Emily Darcy and Olivia Cook, along with many others. When we left off in season one, literally all hell broke loose. Uh, we, we had a spectacular little dragon battle that led to the death of Lucas, I believe that's his name, uh, in the hands of Amon, and that left Rhaenyra's just, just devastated of course that's a son and with tension already at i guess you could say a fever pitch we were already on the brink of war and that just just caused the picture to spill over so now here we are in episode one of season two entitled a son for a son uh we we <laughs> we are really diving into some dark subject matter that we <laughs> that uh that Game of thrones and House of the Dragon is known for. This episode opens up with a familiar family, not a face, but a family, of course, because we are uh, close to 200 years before any familiar faces that we know from Game of Thrones. But uh, we get to the Starks. We see the Starks over at Winterfell, and it was it was a joy to see that as the opening scene. You know. Um, uh, one of Rhaenyra's kids over there trying to recruit the Starks and his men for this war. The news has not arrived there yet. Look, this is, of course, before the Internet, before Google, uh, before CNN. <laughs> so they didn't get the news until late. And, of course, they'll get the news last because they're so far away, you know. And they get the news, and it's like, whoa, things that got real, <laughs> things that got real, but despite that news, it was a joy to see the Starks and uh, them taking their position at Winterfell. You know, it, it was a joy to see that. Uh, we noticed that there are some differences here. I don't know it, the exact timeline that took place between the end of season one and this episode. I don't know how much time has exactly passed. Has it been a a year or so has it been a couple of months weeks day i don't know exactly they didn't really say it if they did i missed it but uh obviously some time has passed it feels like years and the only reason i say it feels like a couple of years is because uh the king uh lord what's his name but it uh Aragorn, the king has children now and they're not babies they're more you know they're much older now it, uh, what I'll say about four or five, something like that. Maybe a little, maybe three or four. I don't know. It could be older than that. I don't know, but it's been some time into aside to that little fact. I would, I would say it was a couple of weeks, but the kids think that that's what really draws me to, to the conclusion that it has been a few years and, uh, Renera is still grieving morning. Of course, uh, not only is her son dead, but it, it isn't like she has a body to recover or, uh, you know, 
because he was devoured by a dragon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we do get a scene later on when she, because she's been off. She's been off uh, in her grieving stage, I guess, searching for proof, searching for anything that would uh, lead her to some type of closure. And uh, while she's been gone, Damon is pretty much in charge, you know, but Damon is out for blood, as he always is. He He's headstrong. He wants vengeance. He wants a son for a son. And so he's ready to go to war. But as Renera is off, she stumbles upon these fishermen who find a dragon wing. And so she rushes down and she discovers the wing and not only the wing, but the cloak that her son wore. And she gets it and that scene... Look, em- Emily Doss, uh, Darcy, who portrays Renera, I think I'm saying her name right. <laughs> I, I, these names, is hard. It's hard for me to nail down these uh, character names on Game of Thrones. So uh, by episode three, I'll have it down packed. But right now, <laughs> it's a struggle. But anyways, uh, Emily Darcy only had one line in this entire episode. But she, she really didn't need that. Her acting, her uh, uh, way to emote in this episode was telling. It, it, it told the story. Oh, my God. Her on that beach holding that cloak, and she lets out that cry where she finally, finally releases. And I believe that that was her first time actually crying since she got the news. And it was so heartbreaking and devastating because it was like the death of her grief and the birth of her vengeance right there, right there in that moment. That's what we witnessed. And when she returned and uh, Damien asked her, you know, did you find what you was looking for or whatever, whatever. And cause he has zero, <laughs> zero empathy. You know, he, he, his bedside manner is trash. And so he he had, he wasn't there to comfort her or nothing like that. But the only words that she spoke while everybody around the table was explaining what's going on, what their plans are, we can attack here, and blah, 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 blah. Her only line, her only words at that moment, I want Armand. That's it. I, I, I just want him. I can care less about all that. I want the one who killed my son. And that's big. That, paraphrasing what she said in three or four little words and you felt it and you felt it when she said it like okay and so at this point that let us the audience know that we're on a fast track to war we know the war was coming but now we know that it is actually coming um (laughs) there's there's no negotiation there's there will be no talking down we are full steam ahead with this at least in the eyes of Renera. Now, uh, the king now, Argon, he's a kid. He doesn't know what he's doing. And his grandfather, the hand, uh, uh, the high tower, who is also the king's god uh, grandfather, he is trying to make his grandson, the king, Aragon, a king. Make him seem more uh, 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 kingly-like, I guess, <laughs> It's a word I'm trying to make. But uh, Aragon takes this as a joke. You know, he doesn't take it seriously. Uh, this is not his jam. This isn't his true calling in life. He, he's he's doing it because, you know, he, he was picked to do it. So he thought. And we know differently. The audience knows differently. But unfortunately, he doesn't. And he's more sympathetic to the people. You know, we get the scene when... Some of the townsfolk or his subordinates are are uh, coming to him, pleading to him with certain things. And he's like, oh, we took your sheep, you know. Okay, fine, we'll give you a sheep back and all this here. And you have the hand come and say, well, sorry, we can't do that. You know, <laughs> we need the sheep to feed the dragons because we, we need our dragons at full strength for this war and blah, blah, blah. And so he doesn't know all the ins and outs of being a king. 
uh, same thing with the uh, blacksmiths who are making the weapons and all this here. And they're struggling to make the weapons. They need more money. And so, uh, but they can't get paid until after. And they come, well, one of them comes to plead to them, like, can we get the money now so we can work faster and harder and get these out? And he's like, yeah, sure. You know, because we need these weapons for war and all this here. And it, it's just a, he doesn't know how to be a king. Like I said, this isn't his thing. You know, at the same time, he wasn't trained to be a king either by his father. His father didn't train him. And because uh, his father never believed him to be king. <laughs> he did not see him to be a king. He picked his daughter uh, initially. So there's that conflict there as well so it, it's it's a whole thing you know beside his mother allison who is sleeping <laughs> sleeping with uh uh Kristen cole which is a clear um conflict of interest <laughs> to say the least and uh they're keeping it a secret of course they can't have that come out that the queen is sleeping with uh lord commander uh yeah that would cause a problem so <laughs> But the hoodinger of this episode was in, in the final minutes. I'll say the last 10 minutes of this episode is when we get the business is picking up in of this episode. Now, Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon linked together are known for giving us some shocking moments. Some uh, did, did I just see what I just see type moments. And this first episode gave you that right off the bat or at least at the end of it. And this is probably one of the most disturbing things in the history of Game of Thrones slash House of the Dragons to me. And it's disturbing not to the point where, like, oh, I'm not watching this anymore. It's disturbing to the point, like, my God, how far are we going? <laughs> are we willing to go in this show? Uh, uh, Damien hires this rat catcher who works for in the uh red keep and hires him to bring another guy in uh through the sewers and whatnot to get in through the castle and murder uh, um the king's son you know eye for an eye son for a son two for a tooth and all this here and so they managed to get through uh get into the keep they get to the quarters of the queen, uh, Helena, who is the sister wife in <laughs> of Aragon. Yes, that's his sister that he married and had children with. Look, it's Game of Thrones. Anyways, the assassin gets uh, two assassins get in there, uh, holds uh, Helena hostage. Like, which one is the son? You know, which which one of these kids are the son? Uh, she points. You know, after being told uh, uh you know she she resisted for a little while and eventually she points now at this point i was like is she really gonna sacrifice her her child you know <laughs> at this moment <laughs> but uh she does she does she points she points to the sun and at first the main assassin was like oh no she's lying she wouldn't give up uh uh the heir to the throne that easy and blah 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 and then the other one who is the rat catcher he looks at her and realize like no she's telling the truth that's that's the son and they proceed to kill this little boy this little boy had i'm telling you three four years old something like that i don't know five six maybe i mean killed him. and what was so disturbing about this scene is they didn't show they didn't show him cutting this boy up, but you heard it, and that was worse. <laughs> it was worse. I didn't think that it would get that bad, but it did. It disturbed me, and and, and this goes with all films and television shows. When you, when when a filmmaker leaves it up to your imagination to fill in the blanks, that's the worst thing you can do. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and and that's good stuff. I, I enjoy films and television shows that do that. You know, they used to do that back in the day. Not so much now. Now everything is spelled out for you. But uh, this allowed you to fill in the blanks as you hear the cutting and the 
ripping of the flesh and all this here. And your mind just goes, oh, my God, they're slight. They are, they are really slicing this kid up. They are chopping this little kid up with no problems. Uh, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. <laughs> And that was that, you know, it, it, that was basically the end of the episode. And now we know, uh, this is going to get deep. You, they, they have murdered the King's son. So it's officially on. It is on now. It, it all bets are off. We are at war. Great introduction. Great start to this season. I think that we are in for some treats this year. Uh, this episode was directed by Alan Taylor, who, I mean, he knows Game of Thrones. He he directed so many great episodes of Game of Thrones. And now coming over to do some episodes of uh, House of the Dragon. Uh, it felt like Game of Thrones. It felt like we were back in that real world. It, and, and it's not to take away from what they did in season one of House of the Dragon. It's It felt like Game of Thrones. But this just reeked of game of thrones to me and i I really really appreciate it i was at full attention normally i have my ipad and i'm taking notes during a show or a movie this this episode i was fully attentive you know i didn't pick up the ipad i didn't take notes or nothing uh you probably could tell the way i was (laughs) reviewing it but uh, because i'm all over the place with it but it's it's so uh intriguing man to say a show that doesn't have action it's very dialogue heavy uh normally that will bore bore the average viewer but i love the story i love how game of thrones tells a story uh george s uh s george R. R. martin is uh i mean amazing with what he created in those books and these showrunners who have kept the story going visually on screen i'm 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 all in i can't wait for next sunday this is premiere sunday night viewing on hbo and hbo max i would like to know how are you feeling so far about house of the dragon uh season two episode one are you picking up what they're putting down are you enjoying it so far or have you checked out or (laughs) have you checked out and you're like look I'm done, especially after season or the last season, I should say, of House of the Dragon, not House of the Dragon, Lord, of uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones. He was like, man, I'm done with this. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I would say, pick, uh, watch it, watch it, watch House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon is really, really good. Season one was excellent, in my humble opinion, and it looks like we're back on track this season. Now, this season, um, this episode very slow i'm gonna be honest with you it's a slow episode it's a slow burn but it burns it will scorch you it's so i highly recommend it but i would like to know your thoughts email the show kb radio podcast at gmail.com you can also search for the show on all social media platforms just search kb radio network also subscribe to the kb radio network channel on youtube and like this video Also, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for the review of episode one of season two, House of the Dragon, currently on HBO and HBO Max. Or is it just Max now? Yes. It's Max now, which makes no sense to me because it's HBO. <laughs> it's HBO. Why, why they took off the HBO off of HBO Max makes no sense. But in the event, new episodes drop every Sunday on those two platforms. want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love everyone. And until we speak again, you all be blessed.